it's time for us to have a conversation on this the nutrition segment which is sponsored by the farmers market farmers market 100 percent hygienic and farm fresh now today we're going to be talking about a very important topic uh, we're going to be talking about foods that affect female lubrication now my guest here is Akosia Kunedu Yadom. She's a state registered nutritionist. And she's going to help us to break down the topic and get into it. All right, Akosia, mm. morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Yourself? I'm very well, thank you. So, um, why is this subject even an important thing <laughs> to talk about? Um, it has to do with female health, and whatever has to do with health is of um, um, some uh, paramount. Um, important and should be given all the attention it needs. Okay. Uh, who are we without our reproductive system mm. as women? Mm. And so because our reproductive um, system happens to be a core of who we are, yeah. it is responsible for we being able to bring other human beings here. It, it needs to be given every attention. Yes. Fantastic. All right. So take us into the foods. Okay, so I will start off by eat. saying that mm. um, the, there are discharges or fluids that we need to be conscious about. And for a woman, sometimes you wake up and something is sitting in your panty and you think that it is, it, what, it, what is it? You need to even know what it is. There mm. are discharges and they are normal. Okay. Every woman is supposed to experience discharge and research says that um, every woman is supposed to discharge two to five meals that is half teaspoon to one teaspoon okay. every day so if you think that okay i have nothing coming out i am i am producing no discharge so i think Therefore i am I'm safe okay. then mm. there is a problem the vagina has to be within a ph of 3.8 to 4.5 so you need to make sure that as a, as a woman because some of these things that causes infertility can be as a result of this mm. sometimes women there is sexual intercourse, spams travel, but they are not able to travel. Why are they not able to travel? Mm. There is a term like insionabessing, it can't stay. Mm. It's because the, most women or some of these women don't have cervical fluid. Okay. Cervical fluid is what accommodates the spams of mm. a man and makes it travel beyond the service. Okay. So if spams goes to the vagina, can't go beyond the service, it becomes difficult for fertilization mm. to happen. So if you're a woman who doesn't produce cervical fluid, it means that for you, that may be your reason for you having infertility mm. issues. Okay. And we have arousal fluid. Sometimes you need to know the kind of fluid the woman is discharging for mm. you to be able to do whatever you want to do. You don't have sex with a woman because there is cervical fluid or, or, or because there is a discharge, sorry, mm. because you, the act has to happen before the cervical fluid happens too. So you don't mistake discharges for arousal. Of arousal. Yes, yeah. because arousal fluid definitely there should be arousal before mm. the fluid is released for an intercourse to happen. Mm. It is to help. Discharges and fluids, vaginal fluids, are supposed to help so that the vagina stays within the specified pH of 3.8 to 4.5. That yeah. one, any gynecologist can have a swipe and then it could be checked for you. So if you are a, a woman of childbearing age, if you want to conceive, you need to be making sure that you are visiting the gynae to make sure that you have the right vaginal pH. And obviously, there are foods that can help you mm. with your vaginal fluid. So I will say that you need to make sure that you know the discharges you are feeling and the consistency that, that comes with it. So um, for discharge, every discharge comes with cells from the vagina and cell walls. It has mucus in them. It has um, water uh, in them. And then it contains bacteria because they are healthy bacteria for responsible for keeping the vagina in check, preventing yeast infection, mm. which is very bad as far as women of childbearing age or yeah. fertility issues are concerned. So you need to make sure that you know these things 
off head mm. and you need to make sure you are discharging every day and sometimes you can feel funny down there it feels like oh I think I am wetter than I should be normally when ovulation is happening okay. in the life of every woman mm. you experience you get more wetter mm. than you would be initially and it is also because it is very conducive at that time for sexual intercourse to happen because so the fertility, body the mm. body is ready mm. for that because of um, um, conception mm. issues. So that is it. We have foods you need to make sure you eat natural aphrodisiacs. We have examples if they are ready. We can have them. So we have foods for lubrication. Yeah. You should make sure you stay off processed meats. Okay. So they are, means, what do you mean by processed So meats meat containing a lot of additives. There are mm. people who enjoy a lot of meat in cans, mm. okay. like with brine solutions, instead of going for the, the, the let's say, going to the, the, ab the abattoir to yeah. get fresh meat. So mm. make sure you do fresh lean protein okay. or fresh lean meat. And then we have processed um, dairy products mm. you need to make sure you so cut these are down foods to avoid yes there are foods to avoid. avoid okay so you make sure you stay off that sugars mm. most of our processed foods are processed juices I always say that if something is processed and they are tagging it as juice they are lying mm. it is not juice because yeah. no juice can go beyond six months three months or even four days so if it's going beyond that it means that they've added sugar and additives to it you should stay off that and then processed foods Mm -hmm. or packaged snacks. They are foods you should also stay off. And then we have alcohol. I have said that though alcohol is something I wouldn't preach, we have um, allowable intake um, levels. Yeah. And if it's red wine, a shot a day is okay. If it's beer for a woman, a bottle is okay. For a man, the maximum is two bottles mm. for you. People will say per day, but I, can, I will say per week. If you can you can go with it. What mm. if I, I took you off completely? Yeah. It is supposed to help you. And then we have high fat or greasy foods. Mm. If you are taking a lot of fat with a lot of um, um, uh, fat or grease, especially hamburgers mm. with a lot of dressing, <laughs> because yeah. it's the dressing that makes it very harmful or makes um, gives you what we don't want you yeah. to have. And then we have white bread. That is why on this show, mostly if we have we have to show bread, we've always showed um, wheat. Mm. bread because when you take the white um, bread there is it's refined or processed and so there is a release of insulin a lot yeah. than you need into the bloodstream and that can affect the pH is uh, the pH and then it can affect the walls or the mm. environment of the vagina everything mm. that we put in affects, affects our body, body. Okay. so you should be very conscious mm. if you are if, if you want to take care of your vagina your vagina or your vaginal health asparagus coffee stick artificial artificial street uh, sweetened drinks asparagus we preach about vegetables and all that coffee is also good as far as even you um, foods to help you with your vaginal health but it is mm. written here Hear that it is part of the bad foods why because there are people who would want to have coffee beyond a cup a day mm. there are people yeah. every morning they have to have coffee a day they can go five times mm. and that can be bad for your vagina as far as its ph as it's far as its total well-being and the bacteria there are concerned because mm. it can temper with everything that has to do with the vaginal health so okay. these are some of the examples of the foods that are bad for the vagina mm. for lubrication and for fertility Mm. in women what should we eat that are good food okay so there are foods you need to be eating I will start off with sweet potato It's great for fertility research supports it and with potatoes research support it for even men and women so we box them all together we have sweet potato we have probiotics okay. and it introduces good bacteria down there it helps balance the vagina the vagina's pH and then a wart of infection. Mm. Once the pH is regulated, a lot of benefits are added on. And then we have plant fat. Plant fat, avocado is part of the plant fat family. So mm. make sure that you are eating healthy fats, um, nuts, legumes. Farmers Market has a lot of healthy fats yeah. and seeds. They are they contain good fats and they can be of help to you. Mm. Avocados is in there. We have leafy greens, which is loaded with vitamin E, magnesium, and then calcium for vaginal mucous um, um, muscle health. Mm. Because sometimes the vagina, there are muscles there and they need to be strengthened as far as their health 
health is concerned. Mm -hmm. And so if you are eating these foods, you are helping the vagina, probiotic foods. Yeah. A classical example is Greek yogurt. Mm. If you are taking that, you are introducing healthy bacteria to the, the yeah. vaginal yeah. area. Okay. And then the first one has to do with cranberries. Cranberries are very good. It's loaded in vitamin E, vitamin C, vitamin C for immune health. And once your immune system is boosted on in a positive sense, it affects the, the vagina too. And then vitamin E, it, and also contain, it also contains powerful antioxidants that fight bacteria mm. that are harmful to our vagina. Okay. And so making all these examples part of your meals, potato or stress on, because fertility mm. is such a big issue here. Yeah. You need to make sure they are part of your meals. Don't be taking them in solos, but they should be part of your meals. And if you are eating a healthy meal, you would have a lot of these things we spoke about being satisfied. The food, the food items in there. Okay, so let's look at the vitamins, um, that uh, vitamins or supplements that are um, important for oh. lubrication. Okay, so there are factors that can make it difficult for har arousal fluid or lubrication to happen. Sometimes your, your mental state, mm. there are people who are not in the mood for instance, if I am sick, I am an invalid, I am on the hospital bed, you think that arousal, arousal fluid mm. can, can, can state happen. Of mind is the important. state of mind is also important. Mm. If she is not in the mood, leave her alone. Yes, and then certain medication. The example is the birth, um, hormonal birth control pills. Mm. Sometimes you see a lot of adverts on television. Ask yourself, is this going to temper with my cycle? Most of them will temper with your cycle. But is this going to affect my vagina pH? Okay. Is this going to affect the, the discharge I have? Mm. We probably may not know the types of the discharges, but now we've told you, you can see your gynae, have him or her do a swipe, tell you what is going on there, help you know where you are as far as your mm. vaginal pH is concerned. And yeah. the best um, birth control or hormonal birth control um, pill, that will be of great um, um, help to you mm. and not hurt you because some of these things you want to help yourself, but what you've been given is what is accounting for mm. the fertility issues and the challenges you are having. And then we have fluctuating levels of estrogen throughout the, the menstrual cycle. Okay. When you hate menopause, estrogen levels drop. And some of these fluids are as a result of the elevated levels of estrogen in our, in our system. Like okay. I said, when you are experiencing ovulation, it is because the elev elevated levels of estrogen, when a woman is in the mood or the act is in session, estrogen levels are on the roof. Okay. So if you hate menopause or you are in your menopausal age, there is a drastic drop. Okay. And so people like that need to be supplemented. Mm. So vitamin A supplements, vitamin, a. Okay. vitamin E, mm -hmm. potassium supplementation. They are foods with these. We spoke about coconut water. We spoke about, um, we did it for the men when yes. we were talking about natural aphrodisiacs. Mm. We gave them coconut water and then watermelon because it contains magnesium and potassium. And when the two come together, it's a powerful combination for a lot of things, and yes. And okay. so you can also do it. We did it for the men. You can also have it. So we have vitamin B. If you have the B complex, it's excellent. And then we have vitamin A. They maintain the vaginal walls and the pH and everything that has to do with lubrication, mm. um, that has to do with uh, fertility, that has to do with healthy secretions, yeah. that is the lubrication, they, they help them naturally. So if you can eat foods rich in these, fine. If you have issues and there is a need for supplementation, it has to be done. So you mm. seek a professional, um, help from a professional, being your gynecologist yeah. or a nutritionist, so that you'll be guided on what you need to know okay. or do. So there are people who are watching now, um, some have challenges. You yeah. know, they, they, basically what you're saying is things like, okay, you said a lot of things. It's like a lot of information to take in yeah. at once. If you can help us to give us simple first steps. So as a professional, what should somebody who is, has realized that, look, these days I feel like I'm always dry. What's, what are some of the basic first steps to take to address the situation? Like, like I said, it's, it's difficult for you to know if 
but discharge is discharge. Mm. When you have discharge, there is nothing like a sexual edge. So you can clearly see, I am here talking about something serious as far as mm. nutrition is concerned. Mm. So if I am discharging, I don't think that it's it has to do with 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 sex okay. or arousal. Okay. Your mind so is not your mind that, is so. not on that, mm. and arousal has to the fluid has to happen after there's something like something has been done, like foreplay. Mm. So I know that for that it's it's somehow clear for the cervical fluid, the the act. The process will, because it needs to travel beyond the vagina, and yeah. sperms, something has to enter before the sperms are even released. Mm. So make sure first you seek help from a gynecologist. Mm. And after you, you, you've, you've seen the gynecologist, you'll be told you want to know the pH, you want to understand what is going on down there. Mm. If there is itching, if there is staring when the act is going on, if you, f you don't feel normal down there, the best professional to help you is a gynae. After that, you make sure to stay to stay like to make it part of you you make everything we've spoken about as far as the foods to help you part okay. of what you eat and if you need professional help to be guided on what to eat mm -hmm. the right supplementation to take you need to seek help from a nutritionist yeah. Yeah. so that is what I, I will say okay so we also have this thing within our, our society that um, you know there are all these people who are going around peddling um, you know, products <laughs> yeah. um, and, and saying that, oh, this is good for this, this one is good for this. Um, if you're a lady and, you know, you need, this is good for you and so on. Just talk to us a little bit about, from your professional perspective, your opinion on some of those things and how, what, what care needs to be taken. The best medicine you can give to your vagina is to eat healthy and to give it water. Mm. Just wash with water. I am not a lover of um, feminine wash okay. because, like I said, sometimes you buy because I am here, I'm in, I'm in city, and somebody brought it to me, so I want to buy. Our bodies are different. Mm. Ask yourself, is this going to affect the, the pH of my vagina? Where am I? As I sit here, I am not I'm looking forward to having a child in, a, in, in six months' time. Yeah. If you are a, new, a, a newlywed, you probably are looking forward to that. So our needs are different. Mm. Make sure you are giving your vagina water, cleaning it with water, and then make sure you are eating well and making these part of your meals. And if you have issues, seek mm. professional help, a gynecologist, a nutritionist. Mm. That is what I will, I, I, I will say mm. concerning this matter. And those buying stuff from outside, I always say that it's very difficult for you to find them when there is trouble. Yeah. And the, the, the vagina is such a delicate, it's like it's the, it's the headquarters of who you are. Mm. So why do you want to be putting anything just mm. there? Yeah. What about the things that you they, they, they encourage you to drink this and eat this and drink this and you know they, they have all kinds of packaged um, I don't know what to how to describe it but it's, it's they, they, they are sort of as aphrodisiacs. Well I would say that when we're discussing that of men mm. we preach natural aphrodisiacs for mm. men and mm. I've preached this morning natural aphrodisiacs for women that is what I will say no matter what they are saying about it yeah. I would want to preach the natural way to you obviously lubricants mm. they they are they are allowed health wise mm. because like I said if you are in menopause, let's say 40, I've had a friend, you, a woman, 35, can naturally she, had, she mm. had menopause. So naturally her estrogen levels had dropped even before 40. Okay. Are you telling me that she's not supposed to have sexual encounters with her husband? For such a woman, lubricants it will help, will help okay. her. And like I said, everything you are putting there has to do with your health. So you don't just walk into a pharmacy shop without any prescription form mm. or without any professional okay. guide okay. or guidance to whatever you are going to buy and go like, oh, Kweku use this. And so, so therefore, therefore also, I am also okay. going to use this. Kweku's mm. body this is not your body. Mm. Seven billion people, different <laughs> faces. <laughs> Even twins, their DNA can mm. never be the same. So make sure everything you are doing, do it the natural way. We've given you 
everything yeah. you need to know as far as the natural ways are concerned. If you need to be helped as far as lubricants are concerned, research supports it mm. and they are powerful lubricants you can use. I won't give it to you today. We are doing nutrition and not <laughs> sex. So you need to consult your healthcare giver yeah. to be guided on what what, what will work get. for you. Okay, fantastic. Where can people find you? Akosia? Okay, so on Facebook, Nutritionist Akosia, on Instagram, at The Nutritionist Akosia, at The Nutritionist Akosia, on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Nutritionist Akosia, and you can reach me on 0243-350206, so we talk about your vaginal health. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Thank you very much, Akusia Kunidi Yadom. is a stage registered health uh, nutritionist, and she's been helping us to understand foods that will help with female lubrication. Hi there. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7:30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily, only on City TV.